Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of a chalk through, I guess, rant style video, just like a chatty video about why I regret using IKEA to build my closet, my wardrobe, and basically what I learned. And for the love of God, do not make my mistakes. Um, I'm still trying to debate whether or not, like, do I regret it? I mean, I love my closet. I love my closet so much, but I absolutely despised, hated, like, 90% of the process and I just hope that this kind of serves as a little bit of a, a lesson or lessons and just don't make my mistakes because it might make your life a lot easier. <laughs> I'll have the closet reveal linked where I basically share with you the price, the process and all that jazz but one thing that I think the first issue, I've actually got all my issues written down on my notes section, the first thing that I wanted to talk through with you is the planner and the planning process. Now I love the planner, the planner on the website um, I loved it. I loved the process of planning and putting it together. I found it very therapeutic and, and nice and fun to do until it glitched and apparently this is an issue that doesn't happen very often but IKEA basically cannot do anything about it. So when you when you put together your closet, especially if you have as much as this and, and as many parts as this, you have a planner, you put it together, you save that planner and again, I've never shot with IKEA before, so I didn't really know the process, but you save the planner and you can like refer back to it, change it, work on it, all that jazz. So I was going through the planner, working through the planner. I would come back to it every few days before I actually made up my mind and decided that that's what I wanted to go with. So I had saved, I had a code saved, like when you save it, you get a code and whatnot. And fast forward to the parcel actually arriving to my house, or the parcel arrived in like three different orders but anyway it arrived to my house actually had the installation man talk to me um, a few days before he was planning to install the closet and asking me for the planner and if I had the planner and I just weirdly assumed that the planner would be in the boxes or like in the order because I just I don't know call me crazy but weirdly to me that made sense you know what I mean like it made sense that if you pl if you use a planner on Ikea that that planner would come with the package for installation Maybe that's like expecting too much. So I, I was like, oh, I, I don't know. I thought it came in the box. From memory, I think he said that it was supposed to come with the order and it was supposed to come with the box. It didn't. Um, I then went on to the website and tried to put in that code. It was actually coming up with an error. I had to call IKEA customer service and I think I was on hold with IKEA customer service for like 45 minutes for them to then just tell me that, well, it's not in the box. Um, it's it's not working and I even gave them the code that I had and I gave them my email address and they couldn't find anything They couldn't find my planner. They couldn't find the plan that I had had made. I planned this whole wardrobe like to a T and there were so many parts that, you know, I, I planned it out perfectly. And to try to remember the exact measurements and the exact placements, like, I'm already really bad with numbers, and I'm already really bad with remembering numbers, remembering measurements, remembering details like that. And I'm, I managed, luckily, for the, the closet reveal video, I managed to do a little bit of screen recording of me actually putting the wardrobe together. So I did, I did try to go off my memory and go go off of what I had remembered I'd created as much as I could. But again, it had been like weeks since I originally did it. So it was a little bit hard to remember. And I, I think that I, for the most part, got it quite right. There must have been some bits that I missed because I have some extra parts that are sitting, you know, in the, in the room next door. And we'll get into that later. But I think the one thing that I learned from that is, you know, don't, <laughs> don't trust the robots. No, don't fully put your trust in the, the computer and the system and you know you think that you've got this code that's going to re-pull up the planner and you're going to be fine like you could experience a glitch like I did and you could very well not have access to your planner so you know take as many screenshots as you can even with the measurements that you put in your planner even write them down write down the numbers write down the exact placements in case the planner f's you over like it did me okay so we're going to backtrack a little bit I'm going to talk about the delivery process I feel like this video is just, it's quite therapeutic actually, it's just me ranting about all the, the crap that I hated about this whole experience. And I appreciate you for listening. Uh, the delivery experience, the delivery service. Now I know some of you may be like, well, it's not Ikea's fault, you know, they don't, they're they not like the delivery company. And yes, I can see where you're coming from, but at the same time, Ikea specifically works with this delivery company and they specifically work with the 
delivery drivers, the delivery company. So, you know, technically they've chosen the delivery company and to be fair, it's not the best delivery services I've ever experienced. I don't even remember seeing like a name on a van or anything. So when they actually delivered my first package, I actually had two or three deliveries that came because they came in separate parts. I remember when I checked out, I remember IKEA called me as well after I checked out and before the delivery date to ask questions like, you know, do you have easy access to your house? Is your house a one way? Like, is your street easily accessible? Is there parking? Like, what's your like house situation? You know, where is the package going? Et cetera, et cetera. And they asked like what kind of stairs they were and you know, like are they, you know, how many flights of stairs and whatnot. Maybe that's my fault. I made the assumption that they would actually be delivering it upstairs. I made that assumption by the questions that they were asking. And when the delivery, when the first delivery arrived to my house, it had a lot of the really big foundations. So like these really big pieces that are very, very heavy for me, for a 50 kilo, 28 year old woman with very little upper body strength to, you know, carry upstairs. There were two delivery men in the first round who delivered a lot of this big stuff. And they basically told me that they couldn't deliver the things upstairs because they couldn't deliver them upstairs. Keep in mind, like I had a whole sauna moved up my stairs and built in perfectly and I've had so much furniture moved up here and it's never been a problem. I was even trying to tell them like how to get them up the stairs because I mean, I know I'm not a genius, but I, I have a rough idea about how things work and it, it was very simple for them, you know, two grown men to get these items up the stairs. Anyway, they told me they couldn't get them up the stairs. So, you know, me being me and I don't know, sometimes, let me know if you can relate to this. Sometimes if you're like a, a woman living by yourself and you're at home by yourself and you know, you have like random men in your house, I just, sometimes it makes me a little bit like mm, uncomfortable and I, I'm not trying to like, you know, cause confrontation. I try not to be confrontational because I'm home alone and you just never know. So yeah, they told me they couldn't deliver them upstairs, but they told me that the man who's installing it will move them up the stairs. So I was like, cool, sweet, no worries. Another issue on the way out actually, they actually dinged my gate. They actually scratched my gate and scratched off like maybe like this much, this much paint from my front gate. That was a whole nother issue in itself and it was just really sketchy and they told me not to talk about this, but look at me, God, I'm talking about it. They basically told me that I could go through the delivery company and I could like, you know, put in a formal complaint with them and it may take like six to 12 weeks to be reimbursed for that and get it fixed. Or he would give me $50 cash in hand to never talk about it again and sort it out myself. And he gave me the $50 and he made me send him a text that said that I accepted the $50 and I guess it's like a contract and like evidence that I wasn't gonna bring it up again and, and ask for compensation. So that whole experience was, was a little bit annoying. I had <clears throat> giant boxes in my house and again, that was the first delivery, so the delivery date wasn't actually scheduled until the following month. So I had these giant boxes downstairs in my living room, just like in the middle of the floor, just kind of there, you know what I mean? And if you're someone like me again, who takes a lot of pride in their home and loves a clean home, having like giant boxes just sitting smack bang in your doorway and the idea of them having to be there for four weeks isn't really a vibe. <laughs> Not a vibe, bit of a vibe killer. The second delivery, which blew my mind, was this other man who, he's actually, he was the only man. He came to deliver, again, a few little small bits, but, and, and one of the large, you know, foundational pieces. He was just one man, and he was so lovely, he was so kind, he actually put the other delivery upstairs all on his own. Like he he did it. He put it in this room. He put it where he was supposed to put it. Again, me being who I am, I guess I just felt really I'm just quite a timid person and it's obviously something I need to work on. And I'm trying to be more assertive, but at the same time I felt bad to ask this man to move the other pieces upstairs, considering he was only one guy. Like he didn't have anyone else with him. He didn't have anyone to help him. And I just felt a little bit bad to ask him to do that. But he managed to put the pieces that he had delivered upstairs which I really appreciated and he was super nice about it and again he didn't ding any of my furniture, he didn't ding any of my walls, he was great. I had organised the dates for delivery and I don't know about you but you know I'm a, I'm a fully functioning adult like 80% of the time and I plan my weeks out, I plan my life out. I had scheduled one of the deliveries for Friday because Friday's an easy day for me, it's an easy -er day for me to stay home for long periods of time because they do expect you to be home from like 
I think it's like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever. That's like the delivery window. So I had scheduled that for Friday. Lo and behold, on Thursday, I was in the city, I was running errands, I was doing some things, and I get back to my car and I have a missed call from a delivery driver basically telling me that he's out the front of my house trying to deliver my IKEA package. And I was just like, what the absolute F? This is not the day it's supposed to happen. So I tried calling him back. He does not answer his phone. I'm calling. I think I call, I'm a, he must have thought I was absolutely crazy by the time he got back to me. I called him like five times in a row. He wasn't getting back to me. I texted him. He, I, did, he, I didn't hear back from him. And the delivery and the installation date, like they were pretty close together. So I think that was the final delivery that I needed. And my installation was that following Monday. So Friday was the last um, scheduled delivery date. Monday was the day it was supposed to get installed. So I needed everything in time for Monday. Call Ikea on my way home from the city on hold for 45 minutes for me then to speak to someone at customer service for them for them to then tell me that yes it was scheduled for Friday. I'm not sure why they tried to deliver it on the Thursday. You're going to need to call that particular company and you're going to need to speak to them. I didn't even know what the delivery company was. I didn't know anything. So I then had to ask the woman to give me the phone number I needed to call, uh, to then call the delivery company. So I spent 45 minutes on hold with Ikea again, then on hold with the delivery company for, I think like, was it 20, 30 minutes, something like that. And that was just about enough, like, phone piano hold music that I could take. Okay, it was bad enough piano hold music that I could take. And then I ended up getting off hold and I was able to talk to someone from customer service at the delivery company and they were like, yeah, sorry, like we don't know why he tried to deliver it a day earlier. And I was like, well, I really need it to be re-delivered tomorrow because I'm getting the installation on, on Monday and I really, really need everything to be here and just safe and sound and you know, all that jazz. So anyway, they had rescheduled and they're like, okay, we'll let him know. We'll tell him that he needs to come back Friday. So that was just a lot, another little bit of a hiccup that I don't even know. Again, what is the lesson here? Like you, you book a time and you book a day to have something dropped off. I guess the lesson is, what is the lesson? I don't know. Keep your phone glued to you and don't miss a call because it could very well be the delivery driver being like, surprise. I'm showing up early and you're not home. Don't be wrong, like once I saw it all installed, once it's all here, like you saw my excitement in my closet reveal video. Like I was genuinely so happy that it was all past me and all, and I was, you know, in the clear and I'm, I'm so glad, I'm so grateful that I have this, but to do that again, like, no, I, I will, I will never, I will never do that again. The next issue that I ran into was the issue that I was unaware that it was actually the driver's responsibility, the delivery men's responsibility to to have these items upstairs. Um, it wasn't the responsibility of the installation man to do it. Like it, they, these pieces needed to be in the room that they were supposed to be in, in order to be installed. And that was something that the delivery drivers should have done. So I then had to seek a third party service. I then had to take the time to research and find people in my local area that would move these items upstairs because I couldn't do it by myself. I think I paid them like 100 or 150 and then like while they were here I got them to do some other odd jobs because <laughs> I thought look I'm already paying you for the hour so I then had to pay extra money out of my pocket to have these items placed in the room that they were originally supposed to be placed in. So again I don't really know what the lesson there is but I guess the lesson is just be more assertive. Like if you're getting this done and you have upstairs or you have a two-story house, just be more assertive and kind of demand that these people, especially if there's two grown men, just kind of stand your ground and say no. Like I was told by Ikea that you would put this upstairs. Um, put it, damn, put it upstairs, please. None of this is really in order. It's just all the things that I remember that I absolutely hate about this experience. So another weird thing that I found was when I was checking out and when I originally had everything in my, in my basket to check out, some of the items that I needed for this closet, it weirdly wouldn't let me buy it online. It said that I had to go in store and get it. Like it was a pick up type of job. Like I, they wouldn't deliver it to me. I had to pick it up. I'm sure there are people out there who love Ikea. I freaking hate Ikea. I probably should have prefaced this video by saying, I probably already have an internal bias because I already don't like Ikea. I already don't like the process of Ikea. I don't like Ikea in general, which I know is probably like a really unpopular opinion, but I just don't like, I don't like Ikea. So I had to go and, Walking through the giant maze that is Ikea, can I just say, don't do that without a bottle of water and on an empty stomach, okay? Because you could be ours. You could be I got lost in the maze that was Ikea. And when you're dying from, like, I'm a diabetic and I was like, oh my God, my sugar is low. I need carbs. I'm thirsty. 
It was just like a nut. It was truly a nightmare. So I had to go to Ikea, order these parts, go to the service desk and be like, hey, I, they wouldn't let me order these online, so, you know, whatnot. Um, so then I paid for them there, but then I, like, I, I couldn't get them in my car, so then I had to pay an additional service that was outside of the fee of the original delivery. I had to pay an extra delivery to get these extra pieces delivered. Does that make sense? Like, it was just, a, it was like another thing. I thought that was it. I thought at that point, okay, I've dealt with, I've dealt with it all, you know, I'm on the other side, I'm in the clear. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I indeed wasn't. So fast forward to the installation day, the day that it was happening, it was actually supposed to happen on one day, but then it was spread over two, over two weeks because the installation man couldn't fit it all in one day or he said he had other jobs. So fast forward to that day and he, he arrives and he starts opening things and, you know, putting everything together. And he opens two of the boxes and some of the shelving is actually damaged. Parts of the shelving are actually damaged. And I'm actually glad in that moment that he did decide to do it and it was scheduled to do over two days because if he had planned to do it all in one day, it wouldn't have really been possible because I had damaged parts. And that then led me <laughs> to having to go back to the maze that is Ikea. The, and that's the thing, I think I'd accepted in my heart of hearts that like I'd never have to go back there again. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not take into consideration faulty items that had been delivered. So I went back, went back to the store. They basically told me, and again, I don't understand this. Like, I guess it's because I'm just so used to not shopping at Ikea and I'm just used to like shopping at stores that you can just you know, exchange then and there at this desk. No, 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 you can't do that at Ikea. You can't just exchange. You can't expect customer service that, you know, they go get the thing or they go get it and exchange it. No, I had to go back into the maze that was Ikea. They basically returned it, gave me my money back in the form of a gift card. I had to go back into the maze that is Ikea, look for the parts that were damaged, find the parts that were damaged and, and re-pick them up and take the trolley to the freaking desk and pay for it. And then I, and then <laughs> I was in the parking lot. By the way, I don't know. It was like, it was like a hot mess of a day. Okay. I lost my car in the parking lot. I was wearing a sweater and the sun was belting on me. My whole, like I was stripping sweat. I was in this car park. People must have looked like been looking at me like I was a freaking crazy woman because I, I was like, look, no, there's no way in hell I'm coming back here. And I just had this fear that I would go home again and have accidentally bought damaged pieces again. And then I have to come all the way back. And I was like, no, 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 we're not doing this. So I was literally, like sitting on the floor, kneeling on the floor of the car park of Ikea without a box cutter, just like ripping these boxes, trying to shred them open with my car key, like Rah! There was even one couple that like drove past and they smirked at me, probably because they look, I looked, I probably looked seriously unhinged and also like I was dripping sweat, dripping sweat. I wanted to take my sweater off but I had a bra underneath and I'm like, let's not be that woman that's kneeling on the floor of a car park like with a top off, ah, no. So anyway, <laughs> I end up like just ripping this box to shreds, like inspecting the items. They were, thank God, completely fine, completely intact. Put them in my car. They were like just small shelving units. They weren't, thank God, they weren't big things like this because that would have been a whole other freaking beast to deal with. And that was the end for me, like that was, that was my last experience I've decided with Ikea. Like I'm still suffering slight PTSD, I don't even wanna know. I don't even wanna, I don't even know. I don't even want to know. Have you ever felt like this before? So there's probably like two or three, or actually there's quite a lot. There's maybe like six of those little mini shelves that are spare and like random little spare parts here and there that I have that I don't know if it was like my mistake from having to remake the planner. I don't know if Ikea just sent me extra parts. I don't even know if I paid for them or not. But you know, I don't even want to know. Like this delivery, this, this installation guy, he was wonderful. He was like, oh, you have these extra parts here. Just take them back to Ikea and, you know, get a refund. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm not, I'm not stepping foot in that store again. I'm not. I refuse to. I, I'd rather just cut my losses, take take it on the chin, and just deal with the fact that I have extra shelves that I don't need. Because I do not, do not even want to go back there. I don't even want to open up my web browser again, look at my receipt. Like, I just, I don't even want to do it. I just don't. I, I, ah, 
I'm ha- I, uh, no, 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 I don't want to go back, I don't want to go back, I don't want to deal with it. I hope that maybe you can learn from my lessons, and again, maybe it's me, it could very well be me, I have very high expectations of customer service, I think it's because I'm not someone who shops at Ikea and does the whole, like, DIY, grab everything yourself, put everything together yourself, like, you know, flat pack kind of thing that's not it's not my thing really like I love kind of unique different furniture never really been someone who loves Ikea so that could probably be also a thing you know some of it's also probably my own mistakes but I hope this kind of helped someone if, if you're someone who's preparing to build your closet or is looking to build your closet just take some of these things into consideration just file these back in the back of your mind of things to maybe consider so that if things like this go wrong or things happen like this to you you will be prepared for them. So, ah, I'm glad we got to talk about this today. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what your experiences have been with Ikea. Maybe you've had wonderful, great, amazing experiences with Ikea because every video I watched um, in preparation for my flat pack system, everyone seemed to like just have great, wonderful, smooth experiences with Ikea. Oh, I just didn't, I just didn't really love the whole process. I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it. So let me know if you've had any experiences with Ikea that you like hated or didn't enjoy or if you've just had nothing but great customer service and a great smooth time with Ikea. Share with me all your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm gonna have another one linked to you right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. And thank you so much for letting me get this off my chest. I really appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed today's rant. Um, and I, again, I hope this maybe taught you a thing or two and just, for the love of God, don't make my mistakes. So thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.